What's up everybody and I know it's been months since I last made a video and of course because of that I've completely lost count on which topic am I in right now. So obviously I'm not going to say which topic I'm doing but the title for me and which I'm going to do today is going to be about opinions, constructive or destructive. So what am I going to do? Well I am actually going to look into how people manage opinions and how opinions are actually used and compare them to whether having opinions is a constructive thing or is it destructive. So without wasting any more time, let's begin. Now actually opinions are actually the stand of your mind. For example, whether you agree or disagree or how a thing should be done versus how could it have been done another way. And opinions are everywhere, trust me. Almost every single sentence you give is literally an opinion. It's like say for example, I want to take something street rather than somewhere street. It's an opinion on whether you want to go here or here. But regardless, you're actually having the same aim which is to arrive at that place. To make it more re relative, we're going to talk about making decisions. For example, I would want to prepare myself to go to a ball and I put on a tie, a random tie. And if somebody knows me, I love to wear a tie with an American flag with an eagle on the bottom. To some people, this tie is really, really striking. But to some, it looks pretty propaganda. So you see, it's a stand on where your mindset is. Something can mean good to you and something can be not. But the fo main focus I'm going to talk about in this video is mostly focus on the freedom of expressing your opinion. So as you know, today's world is a very, very free world. Everybody wants freedom to be able to do everything they want to do. They want to have freedom of speech and of course freedom of expression. They want to be able to freely express themselves and to bring out what they want to tell the world. However, there are good ways where opinions can correct wrong things but it is another thing where opinions can become manipulative and end up mixing up everything where things can be straight and true becomes all mixed up into something of more of a confusion. Let me say for example, hmm. Okay, let's take organizing an event. It's quite common for people my age, especially when you're studying in university. Okay, no promotions. I'm not trying to promote anything here, okay? So back to the thing. Like say doing an event and for example, if your leader has done something wrong, you provide an opinion, then of course it's a good thing. But there are times when opinions are not good. Well, it's quite obvious. If somebody is way too choosy, okay, I want this detail, this detail, this detail and this detail, well knowing that his or her members are not going to be able to pull it off. It's way beyond the limits and the capabilities of the people that they are working with. So that is the issue with negative, with opinions having a negative impact. But what about the main subject, which is the freedom of opinion? Well, personally, I take it, let me analyze it this way. In the older generations, normally adults provide opinions to ensure that we go on the right track. And I'm very sure that the adults around you don't want you to walk down the wrong path in life especially the paths that they have walked mistakenly in their past. But then, people today want to do the things they want. So they imply opinions not to correct other people, but to ensure that things go their way so you can see the difference. The difference between opinions being used to correct wrong things and wrong mindsets to opinions that are forcing people to, to comply or conform to your way. Sometimes I get lost of words. So, what, how is that so bad? Well, one thing is for sure. People today have to accept the fact that they are living in a world with 7 billion people. And when there's 7 billion people, there's going to be 7 billion different mindsets. 7 billion different ways to handle things. You may agree or disagree with something, but don't forget you have your way of doing things. Can be right, can be wrong, can be efficient or less efficient or completely not efficient. So 
you have to accept the fact that everybody has their own way. But the problem with the freedom of opinion is, it's trying to do the opposite. Well, when I hear about freedom of speech and freedom of opinion or freedom of expression, something like that, those with freedom of something, I feel that it's completely the opposite. It's completely the other way around. Yes, you want freedom of speech. However, if somebody happens to say something that is against your will, you will do everything to shut that person down and make sure that that person lands up under your shoes. So you see where I'm coming from. At first sight, freedom of opinion is good in the sense of you're allowing people to voice out. However, the, the way that people are handling it today makes freedom of opinion come up as a bad thing because people are forcing people to do things according to their way regardless is right or wrong. When people ask for justifications and when that person knows that if a justification is going to prove their point wrong, you will try everything to shut down that justification or argument because well knowing that 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 argument or justification is going to ensure that their plans and opinions are going to fail. So, and the, and the worst case scenario is that the people who are forcing this sort of concept are those people who are powerful, which is why I say you are who you elect. People can say, well, the, well, the right people do not get elected. Okay, one thing is for sure you have to understand a few things. There are some fields where intelligent people don't get themselves involved in, which is why you can see the less people of less quality are going to take over. Which field? Okay, I'm openly going to say it's going to be politics. You, you look very carefully. Many of the people, are, there's so many people around us who are wise. Maybe our family members, the adults around us. Some people are very wise and their, and their minds are very bright. They give us good advices and they correct us. They are very, very good leaders. However, they don't get involved in politics. So you really can't blame bad leaders in politics. Considering if there's no people who are good, they are running for it, you cannot blame anybody. Freedom of opinion, yes. Freedom of peop for the people to join. You are given the freedom to join the competition. Of course, whether the, comp the competition is fair or not is a completely another story. But before I go too far, let's come back to freedom of opinion. And I'm going to take it away from politics and look to a more social aspect where freedom of, of opinion has contributed to social deterioration. How is it? Okay, you'll take feminism for example. Okay, let's look into history. In history, women have been deemed to must stay at home and cannot come out. Okay, this is kind of an extreme mindset. But let me ask you guys a question. Women want to be equal to men. And men are obviously going to go out and work, make money, raise the family, provide for the wife, provide for the kids, and of course raise their own parents as well when the parents get old and retire. But the thing is, especially when you have a family, when the father is out there work, working and making money, who is going to take over the household and manage the kids? Okay, you can say hire a maid, send it to a nursery or something. But the problem is, yes, you want financial support. However, if women are not at home, who are going to educate the children? Because yes, cho yes, you can send it, you hire a nanny, but don't forget, people from, from the external of the family, from outside the family, are not, going to, are not going to have a connection as tight as you and your children. Don't forget, you, you and your significant other are the ones who bear the kids, so you bear the responsibility to educate the children. So of course, if you talk about stay-at-home moms, I'm very, very agree with stay-at-home moms. Of course, I come from a family of both working parents, so I'm, so I'm mostly taken care of by my grandmother. But does my grandmother do a good job as a wife? Yes, my grandma doesn't argue say she has to go out and work and all that. And potentially, if I were to talk about my own mother, my, my own mother can, can choose to not work, but 
Of course, she wants to make her own money on the side, so she more or less works as well. But when it comes to me, she still cares about me a lot. Of course, my father does as well. But my mother will put a lot of focus on the household. Of course, she doesn't do much chores, to be honest. But still, if the wife is not going to do the job of managing the household and the husband is not going to be at home for most of the time, then who's going to do it? Hiring a nanny, let me tell you, many maids nowadays steal from your house, so please reconsider that. And there are also cases of babysitters torturing children, stealing children, so yeah, please take note of this. So, how does this contribute to feminism? Well, women want to be equal to men, right? Yes. But do you actually know that many failed families come from women being too powerful? Nobody thought of it. Do you know that many functional families come from, come from a husband working and a mother who chooses to stay at home and manage the household? Look carefully. Look around you. The most healthy families actually come with a mom that stays at home and takes care of the household and the husband focuses on his own work. Which is why the family can be well managed because it is the marriage itself that drives the family without any external factors. So this is a complete example because women want to have their free opinion. In the end, they stay, they step out of their responsibility causing a lot of havoc. Let me look from another side, all the pride things. Okay, one thing is for sure. I do not agree with LGBT. You can choose to hate me or whatever, but fine, I express my side. Because one thing is my faith, okay? It's my faith that believes that LGBT is not applicable. But you can support, that's your problem, because I cannot control you. But the re but let me, let me ask you, why does LGBT actually occur? Well, men, men actually behave like women women actually behaving like men. Why? Well, some people argue it's about hormones. Well, let me look at one thing. There can be genetic issues, but genetic issues only cause you to have physical, physical problems. Physical as in the brain. Sometimes psychological, yes, maybe there's autism or something. Possible. But then, it doesn't cause a guy to behave like a woman. X and X. It's a girl. X and Y, it's a boy. It's a biological fact. Don't forget, I made a video in the past saying that science is not everything. But remember, science is not everything, but science is the majority of different things. People prove religious history by doing scientific research. Of course, there are some things that cannot be explained. That's another, that's another thing, which is why it's not everything. But one thing science can definitely prove to you is biology, genetics. When you're X and X, you're a girl. When you're X and X, you're a guy. A guy, a girl is with a guy, obviously. Because or else, why is a woman created to be with a man and not a guy created to be with the guy? Of course, you can have your own bros, sisters. But then, when it comes to spouses, that's, the, that was, that's when the problem comes. You see, there are t there, when it comes to freedom, it's about how you manage it. There are some guys who can be a little bit sissy. But then, why do some of these guys have a girlfriend? Why can't they be fathers? It's about how you manage it. People say uh, it cannot be controlled, it cannot be controlled. The problem is, can control it or cannot be controlled is just your freaking opinion. Some things are beyond our control, like the weather or how another person behaves. But the problem is, you must learn how to control yourself. You must know your identity. I'm a guy. I can't be wearing dresses, right? Although I will look quite sexy, but no, no, no. I can't do that. So it's down to how you manage yourself. And many times, the opinion of saying that people cannot manage themselves is merely not just an opinion, but a sick excuse. Once again, wrong opinions come to the wrong support and of course that's my point if you support lgbt you can ignore me okay so that's pretty much my stand on when it comes to opinions oh yeah and one last thing about opinions and it's because of opinions 
youths today are becoming super, super rebellious. How can I say that? Hmm? Because I'm a youngster myself. But the thing is, let's say, people today imply freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of opinion. However, this is a main reason why many structures are being inverted. Okay, as a child, your job is to listen to your parents. Like, my parents can give me like what they want, what they expect. Of course, I can say what I want, but many times it's still down to what to the parents because parents, come on, your parents raised you. They bear the pain and burden to raise you. You think it's that easy? Trust me, one day when you become a parent, you completely understand their pain. I understand because, come on, my parents and myself communicate a lot, which is why I can understand them. I can put myself in their shoes. Although I never experienced that pain before, but you can more or less comprehend. But, but however, children today have too many opinions. Of course, because of what society is teaching them. Too much freedom of opinion. In the end, children become uncontrollable. Completely uncontrollable. And, and it's because of freedom of opinions that these sort of authorities get switched up. Parents lose power which is why parents today cannot educate their children. But one thing is for sure, it is also the parents who are at fault for not telling their children that they are at the high authority. Since I was young, my parents always tell me that you must listen to the adults around you because they are older than you. They may be wrong, but when they are wrong, you can always come, you can, you can always speak to another adult to get what you want. It's very simple. Opinions can be right and wrong. Yes, people of the high authority can have wrong opinions, which is why children have to man up sometimes. But it's not a reason for you to be rebellious. Sometimes opinions can correct mistakes, but it is because of these opinions that respect is no longer there. Why do children today argue with teachers? Why do, why do students today love to anti the teachers? Once again, they feel that a certain way is more correct. But these opinions are, the, are sometimes the blindfolds in front of us. In the end, we cannot do things correctly. So, if you're, so to conclude this thing, I've set so many examples proving that I'm, I'm on one stand. Yes, freedom of opinion is useful if it has a positive result. But when freedom of opinion is going to mix up and jumble up certain authorities, no, it cannot be given. Which is why there are rules and regulations, because some things just cannot be let loose. But society today has already made many things acceptable, even things that are outrageous, which is why we can be quite upset with today's society. We can say it's not going to be good, but you must accept the truth. Today is not a free society. It's a society that implies freedom and contradicts himself in the end. Which is why I say, freedom of opinion, constructive or destructive? Well, let me put your answer right now. Constructive, yes, if it's people who know how to manage it. Constructive or destructive, it's destructive. Because many people use opinions to Dicta to be dictators and not to be facilitators. So that's co my complete stand on opinions. So the longest video I made is right now is 19 minutes long. Thank you so much if you watch until this point. You may hate me because of my opinions, but I hope you can understand where I'm coming from. So thanks for watching and, I wa and I'll see you in my next video. Okay, peace out.